Well, I think people like adventure, to be honest with you. They like to do something different. Yeah, you, you think know, they, so? They, I do, actually. I really do. They tried and tested their home country. And what you find in, in, in the case of 99% of our clients is that they already have a home plus possibly other investments in their home countries. Then really the question you, you're asking is, when they have, when, when the world is their oyster, when they can go and purchase real estate or invest in real estate in many other countries, why come to Turkey? Good point. Now, now this is... Welcome back to another episode of Straight Talk. In this episode, we're here at our Istanbul office with Cameron Diggin. Cameron, welcome. Hello. But it is, what time is it now? It's Seven uh, and a, seven fifteen. It's a little bit late. It's um, very late. And I think we only have a couple of people left in the office. So Nobody. That's, no, uh, nobody. That, that's not because they all deserted us. It's yeah. because it's a little bit late. People are going to say, this is this is a ghost town. Exactly. This is, a ghost office, the, this, yeah. is, this is all a stage. Right. It's it's like these guys are sitting there pretending to be in the office. but Pretending to be a company pretending 200 to be a company people or something like that. Uh, but in, but yeah. in fact, there's just Aladdin, Cameron, yeah. and Taya, the, ca- uh, the cameraman. The cameraman. And he's freelance. So uh, He's not freelance. I know I pay for his pay. Uh, pay for <laughs> right. So he's not freelance. We're going through. <laughs> I was, I was Taya, going, how are you? I was building up an argument. <laughs> Well. <laughs> anyway, today we'll be talking about why people should invest in real assets. Okay. I'm not saying real estate. Real estate is a real asset, but we're talking about real assets. And quick disclaimer, this is not an investment advice. This is not a financial advice, right? Is that, is that the way to say that? Well, it isn't. None of what we do is. We just right. give information. In fact, in most cases, we just give our opinions on things. Right. And and yeah. this is also an opinion piece. This Absolutely. is how we Absolutely. think. Absolutely. You know, right. and, and we would like to share that. So please go. I, I, I read the points, yes. Yeah. Some interesting points, yeah. Right. Go do your homework before you decide. But today we'll be talking about something really, really interesting because a lot of people have these questions, right? Cameron, we're going through we're going through interesting times. Uncertain times. Uncertain, interesting. Yes. Um, corona. Although it's a philosophical conversation, which we probably are not going to be holding here, but I am of the opinion that um, we're at the verge of um, a change. The new world order. Well, I wouldn't call it as such, but I think we're at the verge of a change, a change as to how we perceive the world and Correct, yeah. the, the, the whole economics of the world. I think a, a change is upon us. Whether we're going to see it in our lifetimes or not, I doubt that. But I think the things we do and how we do things in the world is about to change. Next 50 years, next 100 years, I don't know. But I don't know, I feel it. There's there's a change upon us. I don't know. What do I base it on? I have no idea. It's just, I See, feel it's, it. It's those people at I your age it. group. Yeah, okay. It's my age group, yes. isn't it? Yes, once they... So we get nostalgic you know, once we, once once they we get, get married and have children uh, and have a business and a little bit of money and stuff like we that. We have a dog they too. Go into, yeah, I do have a dog. And you have dogs too. So they, they go into <laughs> speculating about these types right. of things. You know? We become yeah. philosophical. Right, right. Yes. What yeah. else can we do? So um, I saw a tweet from Elon Musk, huh. our favorite... Well, a lot of people don't like him actually, right? Guys, what do you think about Elon Musk? Do, do you like the guy? If you do or if you don't, you know, uh, share your opinion on the comment section down below. And okay. he says, and I quote, it is generally better to own physical things when inflation is high. Okay. Now, you can take what th- this one particular tweet and make a full-on documentary about, you know, yeah. the data, you know, financial analysis and everything. But the, really and truly, the proof is in the pudding, isn't it? In times of uncertainty, people stick to what they know best. And real assets, the number one is real estate. Is that how you see this? Yes, for sure. I think <clears throat> one of the um, most unsettling things as far as humans are concerned um, is uncertainty. When in, in the times of uncertainty, we, we, we increase our stress levels and we kind of feel a little bit, should I do this? Should I do that? Is that the best course of action? Is this the be- best course of action? So in times of uncertainty, and, and certainly when we look around, there's a fair deal of uncertainty going on. Like not, not just the conflict in Russia, Ukraine, 
Um, but th there are other things we just um, we appear to have come out of a two year long COVID situation, right. which had a massive impact on logistic costs generally along the supply chains around the world, which sort of um, came with it some inflationary factors. Um, in the US, we're seeing that. In the UK, we're seeing that. Generally, in Europe, we're seeing that. In Turkey, we're seeing that. I think there's hardly any country that has not had this inflationary impact creeping right. in. So, Do you, you want know, some little bit of data as to please, the scope of the please. U.S. consumer price index rose year on year by 7.5%. As far as I know, that's the highest increase in inflation in the last 40 years in the U.S. 100%. 100%. Same in the U.K., in fact. Yes, Britain is not yes. far behind with prices yes. rising by 5.4%. So what happens when you know these types of inflationary measures creep in, particularly in developed economies, is that the, the tool uh, that policymakers tend to use is interest rates. Right. So when inflation goes up, they tend to increase interest rates in order to um, curb down inflation. So in developed economies, more so than developing or emerging markets, uh, increased interest rates tend to slow down economic growth. Right. So in itself, that's uncertainty because economic growth slowing down has got repercussions in the job market, in the innovation index, all sorts of repercussions. So again, more uncertainty. When is it going to be out? When will the GDP growth start coming in? When will inflation go down? All these kind of right. questions, they cause uncertainty. You so actually talked about a very, very good thing. What's that? Because as, as, the, infl as the inflation rates you know, they, they soar, the interest rates, they go up as well. Generally. Slows down the uh, economic growth. Turkey has done the opposite of that. Turkey, Turkey's policy makers, um, predominantly Tur Tur Turkish president, t took the view that despite the apparent pressure to increase interest rates, we're not going to increase interest rates so dramatically because he'd rather sacrifice a bit of that for... Um, so as not to curb economic growth. Right. Now, we yet to see whether this model um, is going to work. There are pros and cons for it, for sure. Right. Um, but again, it's uncertainty. Right. And if we look at a lot of these countries where we are seeing unprecedented levels of inflation now, um, from US to emerging markets, um, the, the difference between inflation rates and interest rates uh, is giving negative equity. What, what we mean is, uh, simply put, let's assume 15% inflation, annual inflation, interest rates, say, are hovering around at 10%. That means, very simply put, there's a 5 percentage points difference, which means that if you hold an asset, an well, not a tangible asset, say if you hold money in the bank or equivalent type of investments, what it kind of means is that a year from now, all, all things being equal, what is worth the buying power of 100 will be less than 100. Correct. Because I inflation is eating into it, which means that holding your funds your assets at the bank definitely appears to be a bad idea. So where do you invest then? Where do you put your money so that you not only um, generate some sort of an income, but also you minimize uh, the risk of value erosion? Mm -hmm. Okay, so, well, real estate, among other things, but, you know, at the top of the tangible assets um, pyramid, let's say, certainly right. is real estate, it appears to be nowadays the safest and lowest risk investment. Correct, correct. I think this is the main kind of, you know, we could, we could talk about many, many factors as to why, you know, investing in tangible assets or real assets, as you put it, right. I would say investing in real estate, right. actual hardcore property, okay, we could we could elaborate as to why that is the safest thing, but in my opinion, it's uncertainty. It's highly re related to uncertainty. In in times of uncertainty, people tend to want to hang on to certainty. 
where they see certainty. In other words, where they, they see tangible assets. Right, right. You can touch, you can see, you can feel, um, and certainly they're not producing more of it, they're not producing more land, right? Of course, of course. It's the supply is limited, which should mean that over the course of the next, say, five years, um, your investment in real estate should appreciate in value. At least it should maintain your wealth, wealth preservation, as we call it. Right. So I think bottom line is that. And and we were talking the other day um, with with Shevki, and you know he's we, still there. Yeah, no, he's left. Oh, he's left. He's he, left. Even of, of course, Shevke he's going to leave. It's it's seven <laughs> thirty. Of course, he's going to leave. Yeah. So um, Shevki and I were talking. By the way, uh, we're crypto investors, both Cameron and me, and we believe in crypto. We believe in the future. It's of funky. It's interesting. Right. right. And it's um, risky. It is risky. But the upside, if it comes, when it comes, it, right, it's could worth be it. quite significant. That is for us because we are people who have not accumulated wealth in crypto. Yes. We put X exactly. amount of money and now we have 20%. For, for, for us, it's, it's, it's a side you know. thing. I right. mean, we it's don't major on correct. crypto. We don't invest a lot of right. funds into crypto. It's a side thing that we play with a little bit as well. Right. And we sometimes strike lucky and we sometimes right. do not. Right. Um, yeah. But we have a, a considerable number of our clientele who have people who have accumulated wealth in crypto. Yes. I was talking to Shevki the other day, and he said one of his clients, he's just offloading all of his digital assets yes. and buying real estate le ref left, right, and center. Yes. And Shevki, Shevki's client is not the only one. We have, I mean, I have my clients as well, people who you know. That we are observing this, this behavior I from, from I people know. who have accumulated wealth in crypto because... There's, there's, there's a sharp rise yes. and there's a huge uncertainty. You could be okay with the uncertainty because the risks are, you know, the, the rewards are greater, but everything else is also uncertain now yes. because of the inflation and everything. Money yes. literally has no value. So the guy keeps on buying real estate. Well, as you said, he's not alone in this and quite a few um, crypto um, investors that I talk to um, they make the same observations and they're actually taking similar actions. What they're doing is they're divesting a chunk of their crypto wealth and they're divesting out of crypto into tangible assets, real estate. And I'm seeing this more and more. You know, people who two, three years ago uh, would have been heavier in terms of crypto, that be more bullish into crypto they're kind of divesting out of crypto and investing in real estate. People do realize that on an ongoing basis, which is sort of say, simply put, rental income you get on real estate, may not be phenomenal, right. okay? But yet, people are after that um, lower risk, safer investment, which is important. I like real estate because of that. Well, I, I, like, I like real estate too, and a lot of people, as as we said, because of the soaring inflation, um, they're 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 shifting towards real estate. And um, I'm gonna give you one example. Um, Turkey, you know, lowered the interest rates, and um, this dramatic devaluation that we experienced on the Turkish lira yes. was partially a great portion of it was because of that, but. Of course, there was you know there was a global inflation as well. It just went in hand on hand, and you know a, a landslide that happened. At that time, a lot of people, whomever so has a little bit of cash, they went into real estate. They rushed into real yes. estate, which back in November jacked up the prices yes. here in Turkey. And I have a beautiful quote. Let me read this: Real estate appraisal general manager Makbule Yonel Maya says. People see housing as means of defense against inflation. Of course. Which was instrumental in the sharp price rise in November. Now, hence my question to you. Where do you see these prices? They're increasing. Okay. Oh, yeah. um, do you think the prices might come down or the prices in Istanbul ever come down? Is this a bubble that's going to burst? Or is, you know, or is this a... 
natural organic increase yeah. because simply there is a huge demand because of the you know how city yeah. grew and in yeah. demand for quality housing as people's income okay. levels go higher how do you see this all right now okay this is this is this is an interesting question well not so much as interesting as is a rather valid question in that if we look at the property prices let's again look at the largest property market of Turkey, which is Istanbul. If we look at the property prices in Istanbul over the past three years, on the whole, they've gone up. Yes. And in fact, in some areas, they have gone up quite considerably. Now, yep, um, a question is asked as to is there a bubble forming? And if there is, will it burst? The interesting thing is, Aladdin, that I've had this question put to me not just in the last year or two, but in the last 10, 12 years, as far as Istanbul is concerned. Because the last 15 years or so, Istanbul real estate prices on the whole have been going up and up and up. Of course, they started at very, very humble beginnings. 15 years ago, Istanbul, average property prices in Istanbul were very low compared to many other um, large capitals of the world. Today, compared to other larger capitals of the world, interestingly, and I think we had done a straight talk on this, and we, we had put up the figures as well in a table format, Istanbul real estate average prices are still lower, in fact, in some compared to some cities around the world, significantly lower. So, is there a bubble? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's a bubble. There may be, uh, there may be, artificially high prices in some segments of Istanbul real estate. I see that in some segments and in some areas of Istanbul real estate where properties were sold, uh, where properties were sold as packages and uh, kind of um, where, in fact, where you have a higher proportion of foreign nationals buying. Mm -hmm. They kind of pushed up the prices. But that's in isolated pockets of Istanbul. Generally, if we look at Istanbul, particularly in central Istanbul, I don't believe there's a bubble. However, however, what there is, is <clears throat> the lower income brackets in Istanbul, we're not talking about average, we're talking low to average income, lower middle classes, let's say, of Istanbul, they're finding it increasingly more difficult to access the housing market. They're mm -hmm. finding it increasingly more difficult to purchase properties, purchase homes. This, Istanbul is not alone in this. In fact, if you look at the disparity, let's say, between lower middle classes, uh, their average income, and the average property prices in Istanbul, the disparity that you see, if you look at, let's say, London, you will see a bigger disparity. So Istanbul is not alone in this. But it still has that margin. There is still that yeah. margin. But what I think will happen, I right, see, right. interestingly, I see property prices in Istanbul further going up right. during the course of 2022, right. despite all the uncertainty we have around the world, because the pressures are there. Yeah. The um, upward pressures are there. And we know from our immediate circle of developers um, that um, they already have scheduled price increases for going forward for the next six to nine months. Right. Um, sort of once we sell 20% of the stock, then we put it up by X percent, and we sell another 20% of the stock, then we increase price by another X percent percentage points. And the more successful developers who are producing the right product at the right locations, they are definitely able to do that. And you know some of these developers. Of course, yeah. And you know that if you were to jump into our car tomorrow and drive around, there'll be hardly any stock left for, uh, within, within the projects. Right. Because today, one of the biggest, uh, d despite everything going on around the world, one of the biggest problems we have today as Property Turkey is finding good stock in Istanbul. It's very low. Very low. Yeah, it's very thin. Yeah. Okay, I understand that in, in times of uncertainty and high inflation, people stick to real estate. I get that. But why would people go to another country to invest in real estate? Why should people come to Turkey? And if I was, I don't know, if I'm living in States, Canada, wherever, I just buy the property down the block. Why would I go to another country at the time of uncertainty 
to put my money in. Well, I think people like adventure, to be honest with you. They like to do something different. Yeah, you, you think know, they, so? They, I do, actually. I really do. They tried and tested their home country. And what you find in, in the case of 99% of our clients is that they already have a home plus possibly other investments in their home countries. Then really the question you, you're asking is when they have, when, when the world is their oyster, when they can go and purchase real estate or invest in real estate in many other countries, why come to Turkey? Good point. Now, now this is why I see, and I'm not going to, uh, this is not my opinion. This is statistically what I see from people that majority of our clients majority as much as 95 97 percent of our clients who invest in turkey even though they may say to you that this is purely an investment they have an emotional attachment to turkey right there's something of an emotional lifestyle nature they either like turkey they've been they've seen they enjoyed the country they enjoyed what is the melting pot of East meeting West. Interesting. A modern country, yet with certain traditional values. Certainly a beautiful geography, not just Istanbul, but all over Turkey. It's a beautiful country. You have four seasons in one. This country is blessed. It's a, it's a highly blessed country. It is. A lot of people are still unaware of this, but people who have spent as little as one week in Turkey they know it just too well. So you're just saying that Turkey is it's not undervalued. yet. Yes. Turkey, Turkey is undervalued. Right. right. That's right. what I'm saying. And I bet you, and let's take comments on this. Let's, let's do that. Please, let's do that. Please give us your comments on this very point. I hold the opinion as someone who has traveled quite extensively around the world. Okay. I hold the opinion that Turkey for what it truly represents and offers, is massively undervalued still. And that's mm. where I see the true potential of not only real estate, but Turkey as a product that should be marketed out there. Right. And I think it's still undervalued. I 100% agree with you. The ones who've been to Turkey, the ones who are knowledgeable about Turkey, please comment down below and please. let's see let's let's and see let's what you think. Let's read those comments. Let's see and I'm pretty think. sure that many other people would love to read your comments because right. at the end of the day, we are property Turkey and you could you could you could say that we're here to market Turkish real estate. Okay, let's hear the comments of right, people from your side. who are Let's hear, yeah. independent. Right. I'd love to read those comments. Yes. Please, please write your comments on this subject. Is Turkey undervalued? I hold the view that it is greatly undervalued as a product. And whatever you put on that product, whether it's real estate, whether it is holidays, whether mm. it is honeymoons, right. whether it is weddings, whether it is Turkish carpets, Turkish marble, Turkish, Turkish furniture, products, Turkish yeah. products. Skilled labor. I think yeah. they're very, very undervalued still. And I think that's the real potential. The rest that we keep talking and talking and talking about is just blah, 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 blah. Right. That's the real core of whether you will see a good growth in the long run in your real estate or not. As much as it is lovely listening to you, um, we have a time limit, and we're actually diverting from the subject a little bit. We're, I and, know and, we're and getting you, more you, philosophical. Right, late, and and, late and hour of the right, day. I can't help it. right, and you have given me a great idea. Is Turkey undervalued? It's definitely. We, we, we should we should bring it down here. I need to prepare my data, and we need to talk. We need to talk. We need to compare. Let's go into detail Lo on that subject. Right, that's what I'm Is saying. We, we, we can we can we can dive deep with okay. you know data, stats, right. analytics. But um, don't go cutting this bit. I like this bit. No, no, sure. I'm I'm I'm, I'm keeping they, this they, bit. They, this particular bit developed so spontaneously. I mean, I've got all this, but you know yeah. what? I like the notes and everything. This. Yeah. I found it a bit boring, so I didn't. Papers and papers, and you know the data <laughs> analytics. But, but guess what? At the end of the day, it comes down to entertainment. Exactly. You know that's what YouTube is. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much right. uh, for Cameron. Uh, thanks a lot for this uh, amazing a good episode. One. I like it. <laughs> and guys, any questions, uh, any inquiries, advice with this WhatsApp number, you can reach us. Comment down below. Give the video a like if you found it informative. And also don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Until next time.